Hey there, what's up guys? In this video, I want to cover the topic analytical geometry. So we're going to go over a couple of formulas that appears in analytical geometry. I'm also going to show you some notes and extra theory that you need to know when approaching this topic. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look into is the equation of a straight line. So the equation of a straight line can be written as y equal to mx plus c. Now, m is the gradient of the line. Okay, so to calculate the gradient of a line, we could use the formula m equals to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, and to use this formula, you need two points on the line. Substitute the coordinates to those points and you'll be able to find the gradient that way. But there's a second method to find the gradient of a line. And this is by using the angle of inclination. The formula goes as follows. M equals tan theta, where theta is the angle of inclination. Okay, now one thing to note about gradients is that gradients describe the slope of a line. So if lines are parallel, that must mean that the gradients are equal. And here's another thing. If lines are perpendicular to each other, then the product of the gradients will be negative 1. Now, product indicates multiplication. So what I'm saying is if you multiply the two gradients by each other, then our answer would be negative 1. Okay. Then we come to C. Now, C is the y-intercept of the line. And it's pretty simple to calculate C. You just substitute any point on the line but only after you found the gradient. Then you substitute a point to solve C. Okay, moving on. We now come to the distance formula and the midpoint formula. So the distance formula is D equals the square root of X2 minus X1 squared plus Y2 minus Y1 squared. Now, as you can see, this formula resembles Pythagoras a lot, and that's because it's derived from Pythagoras. The midpoint formula is x2 plus x1 divided by 2, so you're working out an average for the x's, and y2 plus y1 over 2, also working out an average for the y's. Now, it's also important to note that these questions can be asked differently. Sometimes they give you the coordinates and you'd have to find the gradient, the distance or the midpoint and other times they might give you those three things and you need to find the coordinates so for example I could give you the distance and ask you to work out the x or y coordinate or I could give you the midpoint and again ask you to work out those and for that you would use the following formula xm equal to x2 plus x1 over 2 and you can repeat the same process for y's ym equal y2 plus y1 over 2, where in this case xm and the ym, those are the midpoint x and y values. Now the midpoint formula should not be confused with the midpoint theorem. Let me show you what the midpoint theorem looks like. So the midpoint theorem goes like this. In triangle ABC, we have m on line AB and m is the midpoint of AB. Also, you have point M on line AC, and M is the midpoint of AC. Now, if those two midpoints are joined by a line, as shown in the triangle in front of us, then AM is equal to BM, and AN is equal to CM. This makes MN parallel to BC, and MN half the size of BC. So if BC is equal to X units, then MN would be half of that X units. And so when any of these two conditions are met, then the other two conditions will automatically apply. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's have a look at quads, quadrilaterals. And in specific, we're going to focus on the parallelogram, because this one either appears more frequently or just has a higher level of relevance because its properties can be shared with other quads as well. So the parallelogram, its first property is that the opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel. Second property 
is that the opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal. The third property is that the diagonals bisect one another. Now what does that mean? If the diagonals bisect, it means they cut each other in half, so they intersect at the midpoint of those diagonals. And lastly, opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal. Okay, so it's important to remember that these properties can be associated with the formulas that we are also taught. Length is related to the distance formulas. When lines are parallel, they are talking about the gradients being the same. And lines that bisect cross at the midpoint, so midpoint formula. And the angles can be also calculated using angle of inclination and other techniques. Now a parallelogram shares its properties with a square, a rectangle and a rhombus. Also other noteworthy quads are quads such as a kite and a trapezium. Those are also very relevant and important to know. And this brings us to the last part which is the equation of a circle. Now the equation of a circle can be represented by x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equal to r squared. Notice this formula looks very similar to the distance formula. Instead of having the square root, we now have the square on the other side. But it's very similar. So in the circle equation, a and b represents the center coordinates of the circle. And r represents the radius of the circle. Now have a look at the circle alongside. Now tangents often appear in analytical geometry as well. So if we draw a tangent to this circle, note the equation of a tangent would be the same as the equation for a straight line because a tangent is also just a straight line. So it's going to be y equal to mx plus c. Now to find m, the gradient, we can't use the traditional gradient formula of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 because we are not given two points. In most cases, you'll only be given the one point. But if you can find the gradient of the radius, we know that a radius is always perpendicular to a tangent. So therefore, the gradient of the radius multiplied by the gradient of the tangent should give us a product of negative one. So therefore, the gradient should always be a negative reciprocal. Let me make an example. What if I gave you the gradient of the radius as positive 2 over 3? Then that implies that the gradient of the tangent is negative 3 over 2. You see, it's the negative reciprocal. Okay, I trust this was helpful. So please watch my next video on the playlist where we do examples regarding analytical geometry.